What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Thank you for clicking onto this reaction. I hope you're looking forward to it just as much as I am. If you haven't already, head over to the content creators page. That link is in the description box down below. If you haven't already and you're enjoying our content, you know what you need to do. You need to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, but we're gonna jump straight into this one. The start of World War III, the Cuban Missile Crisis, day eight. Let's go. Eight. Remember when you were a kid and you built something cool but dangerous like like a pirate ship using all the pillows you could find and you're in the Caribbean on a swashbuckling adventure with your little brother using broomsticks for swords and then suddenly some grown up walks in yelling at you to stop because it's all fun and games till someone loses an eye followed by angry questions about what the hell are all the pillows doing on the floor and suddenly you're at home again and your ship is gone and you're standing in front of a mountain of old pillows realizing that this maybe was in fact a little bit dangerous and you could have maybe hurt your brother that is probably round about how the soviet leadership feels on the eighth day of the cuban missile crisis except it really is the caribbean and it is nuclear missiles and it is in fact extremely dangerous take me back to those times though the simpler uh... times when you didn't think about getting puss no pussy was on your mind. Oh, no pussy you know, was on your no mind. Bills. No rent, no bills. Your just... pals would cycle up to your gas. Oh, you could knock leave on your the bikes door. outside. Can you come out today? Yeah. Yeah, he's jacking. Can we talk to oh. him, please? Yeah, can you come out? Yeah, let me go and ask my mum. Yeah, oh, be back by this time. Times. Yeah. When you thought growing up, uh, being oh. a grown up was better. You were just there so, was just so, so wrong. There a point in time where you played for the last time and oh. never realised it. Wow. <laughs> wow, that just hit me. <laughs> This is Time Goes to Cuban Missile Crisis. I'm Indy Nidell. Yesterday, President Kennedy announced to the world that there are Soviet medium-range ballistic missiles on Cuba and announced a blockade to stop any further weapons arriving on the island. He claimed that there was no desire from the US to take unilateral action and start a war. But the actual plan yeah, that he has them. set in motion includes <laughs> an invasion of Cuba, possibly even the total annihilation of Cuba if the Soviets do not remove the missiles and the warheads immediately. From a Big Soviet bump. perspective, the Cuban bump. Missile Crisis starts today, October Angry. 23rd, 1962, just after Kennedy's announcement. Until now, it had been Operation Anadir, a bold secret adventure to even the odds a bit with the Americans in the nuclear arms race. Or, as Nikita Khrushchev phrased it, putting one of our hedgehogs down the Americans' trousers. Mm. I love that expression. <laughs> when it became apparent that the American announcement was coming, they convened their version of XCOM. Now that's America's executive committee of the National Security Council, who deals with the crisis from their end. With the crisis on the other end, theirs is a subset of the Central Committee of the Communist Party, with some military thrown in, and it will meet in several different constellations as the crisis proceeds. In the first meeting, the main participants are Premier Nikita Khrushchev, who is under increasing political pressure as his economic reinvigoration plans are failing, mm. his de-Stalinizing reforms stalling, and now his grand foreign relations adventure is also on the brink of failure. Chairman of the Supreme Soviet, Leonid Brezhnev, yeah, he's formerly the head of state, but Jeez. in practice, second most powerful He looks like one of them puppets from Team America. Brezhnev is a longtime faithful Khrushchev <laughs> friend and ally, sorry. but has secretly started moving away from his failing leader. First Deputy Chairman Alexei Kosygin, another Khrushchev friend and ally. Now, he favors soft power and a rapprochement with the US. He is also drifting away from his failing friend and will eventually lead the coup against him and become the next premier in 1964. Oh, and he Deputy gets the Chairman other Anastas Mikoyan, as we already yeah. know, he's the right. only member of the Politburo that opposed Operation Anadir. He was the first to visit Cuba after the revolution and knows the Cuban situation better than anyone else in the room. I love that. McCoyan <laughs> also favors a rapprochement with the U.S. and liberal reforms. Okay. On a side note, so his brother Artem there, McCoyan is the airplane hmm. designer that partnered with Mikhail Gorovich to create <clears throat> new MiG aircraft designs. True story. Second Secretary of the Communist Party, Mikhail Suslov, a staunch ideologue sometimes called the Pope of Communism. He is vehemently opposed to rapprochement with the US. Mm. He leads Khrushchev's main opposition and favors a hard line against the West. 
First Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Committee of Party and State Control, Alexander Shelepin, the former head of the KGB and now political leader of the party branch that controls the KGB. Shelepin is a serious communist hardliner and the architect of communist rebellions and revolutions in other parts of the world. As such, he was Ooh. instrumental mm. in helping Castro take control of Cuba, and he believes in an aggressive militarist foreign policy. Well, that's, yeah, Defense that's Minister that's Marshal Rodion Malinovsky. As we know from the last few days, Malinovsky is a traditional military man that opposes the mm. use of nuclear arms in any conflict. Okay. Although he was a co-creator and early supporter of Operation Anadir, he now questions the operation as having got out of hand. Deputy Army Chief of Staff General Semyon mm. Ivanov yeah. supports Khrushchev. He is a career military man and does not get involved in the political side of things. The group meets the first time at 10 p.m. Moscow time on October 22nd. With the time difference, this is two hours before Kennedy's address, and they have received neither a letter from Kennedy nor a transcript of his coming statement, but they have been informed that they are on their way. General Ivanov gives oh. an update on the deliveries of arms. Several new shipments have left port on their way to Cuba. Most ships are too far away from Cuba to make it across the blockade line before it takes effect. Oh, so it's One too late. very important ship with a four-ship escort is close enough to maybe make it into port before Ooh. the blockade takes effect. It is the Alexandrovsk, a large Swedish-built cargo ship carrying 24 one megaton nuclear warheads. I was that captain. I'd be putting her up. I'd be putting her to her base and going for it. Yeah, you Malinowski have to. Because especially with the the Russian communists. Yeah, if you're if you, closest if you to that, that up, if you are closest you, to that, you and your family you are going for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because if you fuck up, the communists are going to have you and your family fucking strung up. Oh mate, yeah, like, no, it's, it's they're they're getting a nice house in the countryside. Whew. While, uh, you know, Danny deals with the business. The does not go to war over the situation, if not further provoked. He believes that Kennedy's statement is a stunt for the coming elections, but he also believes that further provocation could worsen the situation quickly. Mm -hmm. Khrushchev sides yeah. with Malinovsky, saying, the point is that we do not want to unleash a war. We want to intimidate and restrain the USA vis-a-vis -vis Cuba. The difficult thing is that we did not concentrate everything that we wanted and did not publish the treaty. Mm. See, just like the Americans were a few days ago, Khrushchev is concerned mm. with the legality of their actions. They do have a defense treaty with the Cubans, but it is secret. So this revelation makes them look bad and weakens its legality. Mm. They argue about announcing the treaty oh. immediately over the radio, but they don't do it since this is unclear if it would help or worsen. worsen the current situation. Khrushchev concludes, the tragic thing, they can attack and we will respond. This could escalate into a large scale war. Yeah. This leads to a discussion about the appropriate immediate response. The hardliners advocate allowing the forces on Cuba the discretion to use their tactical arms in case of US aggression. Malinovsky points out that Ooh. if such an order became known, it would give the U.S. justification to strike back with atomic force. Mm, Especially if it crazy. came out that the order was given before Kennedy's address. Remember, we're still ahead of Kennedy's that bunker. Obviously, there's also a risk that actions resulting from the blockade could escalate into a nuclear exchange. For now, they decide to order the Cuban forces not to use the nukes and to revisit the subject in the morning after they've read Kennedy's note and transcript. Okay, kind, will, of, yeah, however, kind of, yeah. Inform agricultural specialist Pavlov, <coughs> aka General Pliev, on Cuba to make his troops combat ready. They order all ships still in the Mediterranean to turn back to Soviet ports. The ships that are in the Atlantic but have no chance of reaching Cuba before the blockade takes mm -hmm. effect are ordered now to hold. The Alexandrovsk, with her deadly cargo of warheads, totaling over 30 megatons of explosive power, is to proceed to the closest Cuban port. Yeah. They adjourn for the night and await Kennedy's missives. When they meet again, they have regained some resolve. They create a laundry okay. list of actions, including informing their allies and the public about the situation. They draft a resolution for the UN Security Council, and they write a strongly worded protest note to President Kennedy. They also decide to send a telegram to Castro, informing him that they will stand by Cuba and ask him to come to the next session of the UN. 
They will also immediately inform Soviet ambassador to the UN Valerian Zorin so that he can start preparing for a face-off with his American counterpart, Adlai Stevenson. The most significant Ooh. decisions they take, though, are military or about legality of action. Mm -hmm. Four nuclear-armed Foxtrot-class submarines are on their way to Cuba. Their purpose is to take up permanent base in the port of Mariel. Codenamed Operation Kama, this is a response to the permanent placement of U.S. subs armed with ballistic nukes in the port of Holy Loch, Scotland. Now, the four submarines are still far away from the blockade line, but are to proceed as ordered and to try to run the line. This decision will eventually prove central to the chaotic- Imagine being those submarine captains. <laughs> right, boys. We've got to run the line. Wait, what? You, Wait, hey, what? We've got to hold. No. You're running the line. That's it. Yeah, yeah. All right. But, but, but we have nukes on board. What if it goes wrong? Run the line. <laughs> okay. Escalation of the crisis. Last but not least, they decide to not officially announce their defense treaty with Cuba. This too will prove central to the outcome of the crisis. Mm. So the Soviets have decided to stay their course, but will try to avoid a direct confrontation on the blockade line. They're playing for time. In the communication to Castro, they explain about the whole missile plan. It was halfway successful and half not. It is positive that the whole world is focused on Cuba now. Time will pass, and if needed, weaponry will again be sent. Mm. Meanwhile in the US, President Kennedy is turning words into actions. He meets with all the members of the OAS, the Organization of American States, the Continental Organization of Cooperation between the countries in South and North America. Okay, Cuba was that's excluded interesting. from that in January 1961 on the grounds that Marxism-Leninism is incompatible with the inter-American system. Hmm. Kennedy manages ah, to get a unanimous okay. vote ratifying his blockade. Moreover, under the Rio Treaty on Mutual Assistance between the OAS states in case of aggression, several other nations will participate actively in the blockade. Argentina, Colombia, the Dominican Republic, and Venezuela will provide ships, air support, and even ground forces. Trinidad and Tobago offer the use of Chaguarama's naval base to hmm. warships of any OAS nation for the duration of the blockade. Kennedy then spends the rest of the well, day then. in a series of meetings dealing with the details and minutiae of how to enforce the blockade <laughs> and still minimize the risk for the outbreak of general war. We'll get back to that in a few days. At 6 p.m., he signs the Proclamation for Interdiction of the Delivery of Offensive Weapons to Cuba at the Oval Office. The blockade will go into effect at 2 p.m. Greenwich time tomorrow, October 24th, 1962. That line is set at 800 nautical miles from Cuba. When the last meeting with XCOM ends, the Kennedy brothers are alone in the room with the recorder still on. Okay, the president what do they is say? on the phone with the first lady and then returns to his brother. They return to the crisis. Bobby Kennedy expresses frustration about not having direct communication with the Soviets, and the president asks about the spy, Georgi Bolshakov, who has been Robert's liaison with them. <coughs> the spy said, those subs are going through your line, mate. Yeah. Those subs are going through your line. They're, they're, they're going through with this. So shit's getting hot. You need to, at least, at least he's got that, that inside information, man. Yeah, that inside is really good. Uh, 
Robert Kennedy now goes to an off-the-record meeting with the Soviet Union's ambassador to the U.S., Anatoly Dobrynin. Kennedy's message is simple. Tell Khrushchev to start communicating openly with President Kennedy. Mm. Dobrynin repeats his statement from previous meetings, there are no missiles on Cuba. In fact, he's not aware that he's lying. Nobody has told him about the missiles. Kennedy advises oh. him to check his facts with his government and returns to the White House. There he joins the president, who has split from his dinner party and is now taking drinks with British Ambassador David Ormsby Gore. The ambassador gives the president some advice. Move the blockade line from 800 to 500 nautical miles so that the Soviets have more time to consider their options. Okay. Kennedy immediately calls Defense Secretary McNamara and has the line move. So, on opposite sides of the Iron Curtain that night, the two most powerful men in the world go to bed fretting and worrying about their political futures, while the rest of the world sleeps restlessly in fear of the nuclear world war that those two leaders may have just launched. Join us tomorrow on day nine, when the blockade goes into effect, and it looks like Soviet ships might try to pass it after all. Imagine finding we that out on the news. We are planning to do an even more ambitious project than this one, covering Pearl Harbor what? minute by minute in real yeah, time man. on what December 7th. What are you going to do? You know now that you've got four subs that are going for it, and now they've said, oh, yeah, the line's being moved even further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck my life, bro. Fuck my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now keep... they know they've got four subs coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're fucked in that sub if they want you. you yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You're fucked. There, there's torpedoes. And they don't know. Also, yeah, they don't know. Yeah, the, sub, the people in the subs don't know. Absolutely outrageous. This whole situation the that happened shit, the moves in there. oh it's, i understand oh it from the russian side yeah do you know what i mean the fact that their spy don't even know of course he don't know of course he don't know they don't tell anyone anything unless they have to it's the russians well oh. no it's not the russians i shouldn't say that i do apologize it's the communists <laughs> it's not so much better no it's it's not even the communists it was just just the government at that point in time like absolutely terrible mate like, it's That's, still terrible now yeah, absolutely crazy. Um, oh. I think that is the end of that episode, and he is just going to be talking about the other Pearl Harbor episode, which is something that we will jump onto. Mm. If you haven't already, head over to our page. That link's in the description box down below. Other than that, we'll catch you in the next video. In a bit.